is Mr. Smith, and this is the third time I'm recording this Inkscape tutorial video. So hopefully I'm going to get it done in this take. Uh, let's get started. I'm going to go through this pretty fast because since it's video, you can stop it and rewind it and watch the parts that you get stuck on. So to start off, I have a blank window in Inkscape. Uh, this is the default format that it has. This is an A4 paper format. I don't want that. I want it to be U.S. letter paper, which is 8.5 by 11. It's the size we all know and love. Uh, or maybe not love, but you get the idea. So, File, Document Properties. And over here we have a bunch of different options. U.S. letter is 8.5 by 11. And this is a landscape, so I'm going to make it be landscape mode. Landscape is wide, portrait is tall. Your results may vary depending on what you want to do, but like I said, I'm doing a landscape. Landscape format. So, to color this, I'm going to start off with this little rectangle tool here. Yes, it looks like a square, but it makes rectangles also. I'm going to click and drag across like this to fill my canvas area. And uh, I can zoom in if I use the scroll wheel and click with the scroll wheel. It should have me zoom in. There's also magnifying glasses on the side for zooming in and zooming out, and you can do that in view as well. Now, that is going to be my sky, but it's green. The sky is blue, so I'm going to click on a blue down here. If I wanted more options, I can scroll across, and there's all these different colors that I can pick from. If I really want to nitpick it, I can go to where it says Fill and Stroke down here, double-click, and it brings up this option here, and I can fine-tune this to make it be exactly the color that I want. Now that I have my blue sky, I'm going to add a sun by using the Circle tool here. No surprise there. If you notice, I can draw things over on the side here. I will frequently do that, and then once they're the way I want them to be, I'll drag them back over this way. Obviously, that should be yellow if it's a sun. So I'm going to click on yellow. There's yellow. If I want to resize this, I can click on this arrow here. It's the select tool. And I can click on these little arrows that appear on the sides here to resize that sun, make it a little bit smaller, and stick it where I want it to be. Now, for both of these shapes, Sometimes the stroke will be turned on. Stroke stands for brush stroke. I'm going to turn this on just to show you what it looks like. So if I go to stroke paint and click on this solid square here, I turn the stroke on. It's hard to see. I'm going to make it larger so you can see it better. Basically, the stroke is a brush stroke. It's an outline. And there's some things where you'll want to have a stroke. There's some things where you won't. Uh, in this case, I don't really want the stroke for any of my shapes you might like them. That's fine. You can do that if you want to. I'm not going to take off points if you have a stroke on your project, but I don't want it. Okay, so next up, I'm going to add some things using the Bezier tool. Yes, I said Bezier, even though there's an R in the name, it's French. You don't pronounce that last letter usually in French words. It's sort of like how, well, never mind. All right, so Bezier tool and when I export this, by the way, it's going to only export the parts that are in my canvas, so anything that's outside of this line won't be in the final version. So when I'm drawing shapes, I can draw them larger to make sure they line up with the edge, and that'll be fine. But I'm going to get close to this edge and click. That adds a node, N-O-D-E, and basically Inkscape will play connect the dots with these nodes that I'm adding by clicking. And I'm going to add a mountain range just by clicking up and down and 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 get back to the beginning, click on the first node and it has completed the shape. And again, this has started off with a stroke going around. I'm not going to want the stroke, but I am going to want to turn the fill on because there is no fill there, it's just an outline. So I turn the fill on. And I want this to be a gray mountain range. And I'm going to turn off that stroke. Your color choices may vary. You might want them to be purple mountains, because maybe there's a song about purple mountains majesty that you want to emulate. That's up to you. Moving on, I'm going to use that Bezier tool again. This time, though, I'm going to add some rolling hills. So I'm still going to click on these sides here and click on the corners come up here, but what's going to be different now, instead of going click, 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 
I'm going to switch out to about in the middle and I am going to click and drag and if you look that line is bending which is kind of cool and when I'm happy with how that curve is I'm going to let go and because it curved up and down this way it's going to continue curving with my next part and I want this to just finish off. I'm going to click over here on this line here and pow, there we go. Again, strokes turned on, fills turned off. I'm going to turn the fill on. I'm going to turn the stroke off. And, you know, I could have that be a big blue wave, but I think I want that to be green grass. And I can go to the select tool. I can resize this if I want to. Make that a little bit smaller a little bit larger. I can flip this. Maybe I wanted that hill to be up on this side instead of the other side. I've got these tools up here. I can flip it in a bunch of different ways. That's rotate. I can flip it horizontally or vertically. Of course, horizontal looks better than vertical for that particular hill. Now, I could say, I'm done. This is the way I want it. I could rearrange some things. I could move that sun around. I could uh, use these tools here to move things in the foreground or move them back. I want to add some trees. I could make the trees from scratch by drawing them out, or I could get lazy and go to a particular website called openclipart.org. Now, openclipart.org is a cool website that has a lot of free stuff on it. Uh, use your judgment. Every now and then, you're going to find a website on here, uh, not website, on, you're going to find an image on here that is not free. Uh, if you find Mickey Mouse, for example, Mickey Mouse is copyrighted by Disney. They're trademarked by Disney. You're not going to be able to use that. Somebody uploaded it not really understanding copyright law. But the majority of the images on here are public domain and you can use them. I did a search for tree before. And how you download these, it's pretty straightforward. Let's say I want to use these trees here. I'm going to click on that. And the unit's going to be a little slow on me, of course. There we go. Now, I could also download a PNG version, but I don't want that. I want the SVG version. It stands for Scalable Vector Graphic. And that is a native format for Inkscape. It's used by other programs as well. And to get the SVG version, all i got to do is actually just go over here and click Download. And it will immediately start downloading that file. Now, I'm not actually going to be using these trees. I'm going to be using another set of trees that I downloaded earlier. I import them by going up to File, going down to Import. And now I just need to find that file, which should be in my Downloads folder. Right there. And let's see where that is. There we go. Okay, so this particular tree has a few problems. One, it's way too large. Sometimes you'll import it and it'll be smaller. It doesn't matter. It's scalable. You can make it as big or small as you like. But this has the stroke turned on. So again, I'm going to go over to Stroke Paint and I'm going to turn off that stroke. There we go. Now, I could also adjust this in other ways. Maybe I'm going to want more than one tree. Well, I can click on this. I can press Control-C to copy it, Control-V to paste. Now I have two trees. Maybe I don't want them to be identical. Well, I can change them around. Now, if I just click on the color choices down here, it's going to change the color of the whole tree. I don't want that. Control Z to undo. I can come over here, and I have the group and ungroup buttons. I'm going to click on ungroup. Now, this tree is its two component shapes. The trunk that was one color and the leaves that were the other. I can maybe take that trunk, and I'm going to flip it. So it's still the same basic shape as this one, but it's a mirror image, so it looks a little different. I'm going to take these leaves, go to fill. I'm going to change the color just a little bit, maybe make it a little bit darker. I can rotate these leaves, maybe even stretch them out in one direction or another to make them look a little different. When I'm done, click on the leaves, hold down the shift key, and click on the trunk, and now they're both selected. And I'm going to group them by pressing the group button. And now I have two trees that even though they started off as the same shape, now they are different. So let's shrink these down a little bit and put them in my picture. And now I am ready to export this. So 
uh, two ways to save this. The first is if you want to save it as something you can open up in Inkscape or anything else that can open SVG files, you go to File and you go down to Save or Save As, and it'll ask what you want to name it. I'm just going to name it Landscape. Save. I already saved the landscape. Remember, this is the third time I'm doing this tutorial. And hit Replace. If you're saving it as a different name, it won't ask you if you want to replace it. Now, if I want to save this as something that I can import into something that, say, uses PNG files and doesn't understand what an SVG file is, uh, I can go up to File, and I can go down to Export Bitmap. Uh, PNGs, JPGs, GIFs, th those are all bitmap files. In this case, this is going to export it as a PNG file. I can click on Browse to decide where I want to save it. I can give it a name if I want that name to be different than what I named the SVG file. And save as type, I go with PNG. That's really the only choice I've got. But I like PNGs, so that's fine. When I hit Save here, keep in mind that's not actually saving anything. Um, well, no image. This is saving my preferences for what I want to save it as and the file type it's going to be and where it's going to be. That's important to remember. It hasn't actually exported it until I press this export button. So I've got to pick these other options up here. Now, if I pick page, page will export everything that is within this rectangle that we were talking about before. So if I hit export right now, it's going to export a blank image. That's not so good. If I pick drawing, it's going to export everything I've added to this, no matter where it is. If I drag this over to the side, and I have something over here, it would export something that would be quite long, because it would export the items over here and the items over here. If I pick selection, it will export whatever I have selected by shift-clicking or clicking and dragging to select a larger area. If I have only clicked on this tree right here, then when I hit selection, it's going, and well, and hit export, it's only going to export what's within this rectangle right here. Maybe I want that. Usually I probably won't. So in that case, I'm just going to make sure I hit page. It exports everything within that rectangle, like I said. I can adjust the bitmap size, the width and the height, it scales, so if I change the width, you'll notice the height changed as well at the same time. I hit export, again, third time tutorial, so I'm replacing files I've already made. There we go. So I have exported my SVG file, I well, saved my SVG file, I exported my bitmap PNG file. I've got a basic landscape that I made using the shapes, Bezier, tool, which is this one right here, and importing a tree from openclipart.org. I could have imported other things too, but, you know, a tree works. I even modified things with stroke and fill and changing the color and stretching and rotating, which is kind of cool. Uh, so there's a lot of the basics for how to use Inkscape. Even if you're not making a landscape, you could use this to make a wide variety of things. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask.